for your word. But uh, really Jakub, good. <laughs> Jakub, you are very welcome and very warm welcome to give your presentation for everyone here in Finland knows quite a, a but uh, the plane, but uh, we are interesting to hear how was our plane uh, changing in your hands. So please welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome from my Krakus cave and uh, I try to uh, share you with, share with you the story about the well Cadron uh, Cyclone Restoration Project. Um, actually, I'm not a, a renovator, but uh, I was hoping to keep the things running during all the project since very beginning in uh, to, uh, 2014. So I try to share you uh, with all the story because it's not only a restoration project, it's a larger story how we can deal uh, with uh, such kind of artifact uh, uh, which uh, the Cadron is. Uh, let me uh, begin with uh, checking if my presentation is working. It's working okay, that's perfect. Uh, so let's start about the short history about the uh, Cadron Cyclone. Uh, as uh, you are aware of, uh, this is a French made, French design, lightweight uh, fighter aircraft. Uh, actually, mm, fighter aircraft, it's a, a big word for this construction. It was, uh, this construction begins uh, as the sport aircraft uh, just before the Second World War developed uh, in France, of course. Um, original specification uh, begins with the Model C uh, 710 series, which was offered in 1936 to order quickly rise number of the modern aircraft in France service. Uh, well, it was uh, their idea to supply some kind of light fighter uh, aircraft, which could be easily manufactured. Uh, well easily manufactured uh, because of mixed construction, which uh, became the biggest challenge for us uh, right now um, to deal with it. But then uh, it seems to be a good idea to use uh, easily accessible materials, which uh, could be uh, easily processed. Right now it became a little bit nightmare, but uh, it's a different story. So uh, the original model was uh, designed to take part in air races, so it was very slim, very airstream, and uh, uh, the fuselage had to accommodate quite large engine. Uh, it was a Renault engine, 12 cylinder engine, Renault 12 uh, R01, which was quite an airstream uh, construction. Uh, because it was quite narrow, but it was long. And that's the reason why uh, Cadron was looking like that. Uh, the silhouette, it's very long. Uh, the nose section is huge, as you are aware of. Uh, but, uh, well, it was quite difficult to fly it, uh, as it happened in Finland. Uh, but uh, the aircraft, uh, first prototype of Cadron CR uh, 714 version, uh, was developed uh, in, uh, well, late uh, 1938, and there was an option to build up to 200 such kind of aircraft. Production started at the Renault factory um, at the Paris suburbs in 1939. Deliveries, uh, well, did not uh, start until uh, 1940, when the Second World War was, well, um, brewing up. After the series of tests, the first uh, production examples became apparent that the design was seriously fluffed. Although light and fast, it was mostly wooden construction, but uh, this wooden construction did not permit uh, to use uh, engines which will be powerful enough to encounter modern German uh, fighters such as Messerschmitt BF 109 or uh, BF uh, 110. So it's a problem, and uh, Cadrons wasn't such popular like uh, uh, Morin uh, aircrafts uh, in uh, French Air Forces, uh, Air Forces Armée de l'Air. So 
what should we do with the aircraft which are not popular? Let's give them to our allies. <laughs> and that's the uh, first part of the story when the Finland and Poland appears. Uh, actually, uh, two air forces of the countries which have struggled <clears throat> with the enemy desperately need the aircrafts. Some Polish pilots uh, had fled to the uh, western uh, part of Europe after uh, 1939 uh, disaster in Poland when the Germans uh, take control of Poland. So that was the first group uh, of the Polish pilots uh, who were able to fly such kind of aircraft. Uh, they uh, formed a squadron, it was called Groupe de Chasse de Varsovie, called Warsaw, Warsaw Squadron, I'm sorry. And uh, the another uh, well, force which was meant to use uh, this kind of aircraft was a Finnish Air Force. And especially six aircrafts were prepared uh, for the uh, Finland. They given the registration from CA551 to CA556, and uh, they were uh, prepared to uh, use during the uh, combat over the Finland. Moreover, some Polish pilots uh, were also trained to uh, go to Finland and support Finnish Air Force. That's the reason why they were called uh, Finnish Squadron. Apparently, uh, German advance in France was so fast that Polish pilot didn't make it to the France. They evacuated to the um, uh, United Kingdom, where they became a uh, hurricane on later on Spitfire pilots. But the name Finnish Squadron, uh, well, remains. Uh, actually, uh, during the uh, war over the France, uh, Polish pilots uh, has about 23 combat sorties and they even uh, be able to encounter some uh, German aircrafts. And actually, uh, Polish pilots score about uh, 12 confirmed and uh, three unconfirmed victories um, in the three air battles between 8th and 11th June, uh, but losing nine cadrons uh, as well. Um, and some more on the ground. Uh, actually, um, Polish pilot managed to shot down some Dorniers uh, uh, DO-17 bombers, three BF-109s and five uh, BF-110. Uh, uh, so it was quite a good score for the Polish pilots. Of course, uh, in Finland, uh, those aircrafts actually, as far as I know, wasn't used mostly for the combat sorties, but for the training purposes. Some of them were lost uh, because of its construction. In Finland, uh, some airstrips or airfield was quite uh, small and narrow, and this uh, long airstream, uh, well, obscured the pilot's view, so there was very hard to land such kind of aircraft uh, on the small airfield. So some of uh, them were lost, and some of them were used for the training purposes. And now we've got our aircraft, uh, which uh, you can see on the second picture in the condition uh, as we saw it first time in Finland in Lahti. So as you see, all the nose section with an engine was uh, dismantled. Uh, as far as we know, it was dismantled during the war because there was urgent need of uh, engines. Engine was uh, one of the most valuable part of the aircraft. Uh, so it was removed. Aircraft was stored uh, in um, in the hangar, in the Lahti hangar for many years. And what happened next? Uh, some of our uh, colleagues, our his Polish air, uh, air uh, history uh, experts, especially Bartosz, Be uh, Bartosz Belcarz uh, from the Stalowa Wola and Wojciech Łuczak from Warsaw, uh, find out the story about the Finnish cadrons. And they told us about the possibility of um, working together with uh, Finnish partners. We tried to uh, establish this contact using uh, Polish diplomatic channels. It succeeded. So uh, the result of uh, our talks uh, was 
this agreement, as you see. Uh, long-term agreement which was signed at the beginning of May 2015 by uh, Harry Husko, director of the Finnish uh, Army Museum, and Krzysztof Radwan, director of the Polish uh, Aviation Museum. Uh, we were able to provide long-term ag agreement for the loan uh, this aircraft to Poland, and the part of this agreement was providing uh, some aircraft restoration in Krakow's uh, Aviation Museum. Luckily, we have a uh, very good relation with Polish Air Force, so there's a funny story. We will manage to uh, cooperate with uh, Polish aviators and uh, take one of the Polish C-130 Hercules uh, cargo plane to bring back a uh, drone to Poland, to Krakow. And as you see, it was uh, possible thanks to the both um, Finnish uh, Ministry of Defense and Polish Ministry of Defense, we were able to put uh, the aircraft on board the Hercules and fly to Krakow. Cadron delivery was uh, a huge adventure. I really love it uh, to be in Finland to arrive aboard the Polish Hercules and put this legendary aircraft uh, on board of it and bring it to Poland. It is really important for us. It was really important and it is still to uh, have a Cadron display on our uh, in our collection because only two of those aircrafts uh, remains in uh, in the museums. One is in France and one now in Poland. Both of them came from Finland. So thank you guys for that. Uh, organization which were involved to the project and some of them are still involved. For sure, Finnish Ministry of Defense, which uh, is running Finnish Army Museum. Thanks to the great help, it was able to provide all the operation. We were allowed to land in the Finnish Air Base uh, in Uti. Uh, they uh, give us green light to sign a long-term agreement, which was extended for the next 10 years uh, this year. So thank you very much for this. Of course, there was a great effort of the Polish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, supported by the President of Poland uh, and his uh, office. Uh, it was Bronisław Komorowski then. Polish Air Force, who uh, helped us uh, with the transportation. Uh, it was great, uh, great, uh, great help to to uh, use the C-130 Hercules to bring this aircraft to Krakow. Of course, uh, Finnish Army Museum with great Harry Huskon. Uh, he is a real help and is a great partner. Finnish Air Force Museum, wonderful. Uh, both Kaif McLean, uh, director, Harry Hopinen, who is participating uh, this seminar. I hope right now he's here. Hello, Harry. Uh, he's a great guy. Uh, he helped us a lot. Uh, together we develop uh, all the restoration process because you have to know that the uh, joint it's a joint effort. It's not only Polish Aviation Museum in Krakow. It's a, a great effort of the two museums, Finnish Air Force Museum, who is, uh, well, taking care as a specialist uh, on the process and our conservators. Polish Aviation Museum, that's us. Uh, we have this uh, aircraft uh, right now in our uh, exhibition. We provide all necessary uh, restoration uh, procedures we con uh, conservation procedure as well. And Altair Air Agency, there's a Polish publisher who is, uh, well, aviation related publisher in Poland, which uh, is run by the Wojciech Łuczak. He was a great spirit of this project, especially at the beginning of, uh, of it. He helped us a lot. Uh, and thanks to him and thanks to the Bartosz Beltas, which I mentioned before, uh, we were able to start uh, this joint project with uh, Finnish Air Force Museum and Finnish Army Museum for sure. Uh, that's a whole project team, as you see. Uh, great guys from Finland, uh, Harry Husko and Kai McLean, Harry Hopunian. Those three guys make this thing happen. Thank you once again. Uh, you are helping us a lot with uh, additional knowledge, with additional parts, uh, some components, uh, advice and supervising our project uh, thanks to them things are running 
very smoothly. I really love to cooperate with uh, with you guys. Anna Kosharska, she's our restoration team leader. She's a fine arts uh, restorer. She has really good, uh, really good, great experience with uh, two materials, wood and the fabric and uh, and the paintings. It becomes really important because of the uh, condition of the cadron. This particular aircraft was painted in 1939 or 1940, and it's really rare or even unique example of a French camouflage from this era. So uh, together with our uh, Finnish colleagues, we do everything we could to preserve this original painting, uh, to preserve this uh, French camouflage because it's a unique part of history. And as we all know, the main task for uh, us is to preserve, to preserve uh, the matter of the artifacts as good as we can. It was possible because of our great restorer teams, Tadeusz Wysocki, Piotr Łopaleski, Krzysztof Botkowski and Bogusław Godyń. They are really skillful metal restorers. Mm. And the next slides, I will show you how good they are working with metal. Actually, it was a great challenge to deal with some cadron parts. As you know, aluminium and the aluminium corrosion, it's a nightmare. There's not as well known how to deal with the aluminium corrosion like with the steel or iron corrosion uh, or some uh, canvas or wood uh, work. It's uh, quite a new thing and we are trying to develop our method uh, to preserve as many aluminium parts as we can and to deal with the corrosion. Another person who is uh, really important uh, in that project is the Krzysztof Mroczkowski. He was and he is still our historical consultant. He is a professor uh, whose area of expertise is, uh, is uh, Second World War Aviation. He's also our chief curator in the Polish Aviation Museum in Krakow. There's also me. I'm keeping, as I mentioned before, I'm keeping things running. So it's uh, maybe not a very highlighted position, but uh, sometimes I have to organize many things to um, to keep uh, all the process uh, on the right tracks. And at the end, at last but not least, Bartomir Belcash, a person who helped us to find the opportunity to establish a contact, who helped us with many things, uh, especially uh, to contact our French colleagues um, and uh, ask them for the consultation uh, about some cadron specifics. It wasn't easy process and uh, also our French partners help us a lot thanks to the Bartek Beltas. As you see, after arrival, after uh, putting uh, aircraft together, uh, we uh, have the fuselage. We have a fuselage uh, with, uh, well, some cracks, scratches, some uh, problems to deal with without the nose section and uh, required to be cleaned. Actually, uh, fortunately, in Lahti, the aircraft was stored in the hangar with really good condition. There was low humidity, low temperature, so aircraft survived those many years uh, after the Second World War in really good condition. So what we have to do? We have to remove dirt, we have to protect uh, some paintwork uh, cracks. We have to uh, deal with some uh, delamination of the plywood. We have to uh, take care of the uh, of the fabric. Uh, it was, I think, the biggest challenge in the beginning. We need to remove all dirt, uh, try to remove all the organic stuff which made uh, which may be put, uh, maybe uh, be inside the, the aircraft, inside the fuselage. There are some uh, spe specification which uh, is familiar uh, for you uh, as well. So 
So what we start first? Of course, we need to catalog uh, very precisely all the aircraft. We make uh, pictures, we made all documentation, uh, everything which was broken, uh, was missing, was uh, make a photograph uh, with this uh, every with description of the every element of the plane. It was crucial to do this just to show uh, what part of job uh, should be uh, should be uh, done uh, in uh, certain stages of the restoration. Another uh, step was disassembly of the parts which should be disassembled. It was necessary to remove dirt to provide some basic conservation or um, or inspection. We ran some laboratory analysis of the uh, pigments and the paintings. As you see at the pictures, there are some layers of paint which was uh, put it uh, since very beginning to just to the aluminium. Uh, we do some microscopic research as well but you could see uh, all layers of paint which we discover during the first stage of investigation of the aircraft. <coughs> we start uh, with some renovation of the wood elements. We have to provide some cleaning of dust and dirt and other secondary uh, layers which we use uh, some uh, detergents or like nafta. Some uh, dirt have to be removed mechanically without destroying anything which was beneath. We provide some disinfection or pest control. We have to remove uh, organic life from the aircraft to uh, prevent uh, any degradation uh, which might appear uh, after moving uh, aircraft to the different conditions because it was in the heated hangar, so some organic life might develop uh, on it. We provide uh, some impregnation. It was uh, some initial impregnation just to prevent uh, uh, other damage, especially of the paintwork. It was very crucial on the first stage to prevent uh, paintwork from cracking or from uh, well, uh, some kind of defragmentation. Uh, we start with gluing some elements using natural fish glue, which is, uh, well, not uh, very uh, invasive. So uh, we also um, put together the laminated plywood uh, where it was necessary just to prevent uh, an, another damage uh, process. Some filling cavities by the wood filling. Uh, we also use uh, some patches. Uh, it was method used by the Anna Kosharska uh, before to uh, prevent or conserve 19th century paintings, uh, which uh, she worked with the, uh, in uh, the past. We also uh, provide some protection uh, with the final varnish using natural uh, damara wax. It was important uh, to prevent the paintwork from cracking. Uh, that's, that's the reason why we do at the such early stage. Another step, it was metal restoration. It was the biggest challenge because uh, of the corrosion. Actually, it was a problem because of the cadron construction, as you know, uh, this aircraft is made uh, from all the materials. Uh, fuselage based of the uh, wooden construction, but uh, with the, some metal and uh, fabric uh, uh, fabric elements requires us to um, hire specialists or experts in all of those uh, materials conservation. So we need some carpenters, we need uh, some fabric or uh, painting conservators and of course metal smiths to prevent uh, metal objects or metal parts uh, uh, from corrosion or degradation. Uh, of course, metal renovation begins with cleaning dust, dirt and other secondary layers and uh, 
it was uh, quite difficult because we have to disattach some elements like a pilot seats in cockpit without damaging everything, anything. Uh, we were managed to do this, but it was a very time consuming process. Uh, we were able to do it. And then, of course, we have to protect uh, all the paintwork which uh, was put it on the metal uh, parts as well. Of course, uh, uh, this process requires us to stretching some, uh, of course, very careful uh, stretching uh, of some metal elements which were damaged during uh, past years. We have to remove the corrosion as uh, as good as we can. It was, of course, difficult because some of uh, elements was just covered with corrosion or some of um, hydraulic uh, fluid uh, came uh, out from the um, system, which was degraded during those years, uh, creating, uh, well, a very aggressive environment and uh, we have to remove all of it and then uh, cover it with a uh, wax or uh, uh, some um, um, some uh, formulas uh, to prevent from uh, corrosion uh, to uh, prevent uh, the state of uh, artifact in very good condition i hope uh, another <coughs> another issue which is uh, very important. It was to prevent the paintwork uh, on the aircraft. Um, uh, we have to stick all this, uh, well, loose elements of paints just to keep it tight, uh, keep it in its place. We need the filling, uh, a little filling glues on the paint <coughs> using, uh, well, some uh, chalk and glue. Uh, we use uh, some techniques to provide uh, retouching techniques and uh, this was a part when our uh, Finnish colleagues arrived to Poland and spent us uh, spent with us uh, one week working together and uh, finding out the best solution how to deal with the, the paintwork and after that uh, we were able to continue our work and of course <coughs> I'm sorry uh, we put a uh, final varnish mat uh, with wax to prevent the paint uh, paintwork from the degradation. Swastika issue. It was quite important issue as we talk with our Finnish colleagues. <coughs> After Second World War, they have to cover all the swastikas uh, with paint. It was forbidden in Finland to display a uh, swastika as a symbol of uh, Nazi Germany and they were forbidden to display aircraft with swastikas. In Polish Aviation Museum uh, we have policy to show the aircraft in the condition as it should be displayed as it was used uh, during the Second World War. So there's no issue with displaying swastika uh, we've got one funny incident uh, displaying an aircraft uh, on the public display and one of our visitors uh, was uh, not happy to see swastika, but uh, that's not an issue uh, for us. As you see on the first picture, some of uh, some part of the uh, swastika was removed, um, I think, after the war and the second half was uh, covered with uh, secondary paint. We were able to remove the secondary layer of paint and as you see on the middle pictures we were able to uh, recover original paintwork and uh, half of the swastika was restored. Uh, on the last picture you see uh, upper wing swastika which uh, was whole covered with paint not scratch, uh, fortunately not scratch out. So uh, we just have to remove, uh, carefully remove the paint and now you can see original swastika from uh, 1940s. <coughs> Another part which was quite tricky, I must say, it was a renovation of the mechanical elements and uh, 
prevention of remaining electric elements. As you see at the first picture, uh, there's a pilot cockpit uh, after removing pilot seat. So it was in the pretty bad condition, uh, barely with no uh, instrument panel and all the installation was in really poor condition. First thing we do, we remove all the elements which were able to do it. Uh, we remove all the dirt and provide the conservation of the interior. On the second and third picture, you could see uh, oxygen, uh, part of oxygen installation and the fuel tank, which we provide the conservation uh, after removing uh, top panel um, on the remaining part of the fuselage. Actually, uh, working of the small elements uh, consume a lot of times. time. It was over two years to do it in the proper way, as we agreed with our colleagues uh, from Finnish Air Force Museum, which was supervising all the process on every stage uh, on it. So when we be able to uh, clear it and uh, conserve it, uh, we put it together to the aircraft, as you see in the picture. And then uh, we are now sure that uh, it will last for a long time unharmed uh, by the present conditions. That's a part of the project, which actually it's not the restoration uh, uh, strict restoration, but uh, as we agreed with our colleagues uh, uh, from Finland, we try to do our attempt and try to rebuild some uh, part of the instrument panels. It was uh, possible thanks to Finnish uh, Air Force Museum. Uh, they provide us with uh, another deposit as you see those instruments uh, on the picture are borrowed by them and they are now put it inside uh, pilot's cockpit cadron pilot cockpit so we are really proud of this project it was also possible uh, thanks to help of uh, Bartosz Belcaj and his French partners as you see on the graphic on the left they provide computer model of the uh, of the of the uh, instrument panel, which was also some uh, 3D uh, animation which we could use to build uh, actual panel uh, by our metal restorers. It's a great job of uh, of uh, Stop Botkowski and Tadeusz Wysocki. They've done a tremendous job. Uh, to build this instrument panel. So we were really proud of, of this part uh, of our job. Actually, uh, that's a part of uh, a restoration which we uh, just finished a few months ago, no, not even a few months, two months ago, I guess. We provide some reconstruction of uh, canopy, including some uh, plexiglass panels. So we are really proud of um, putting together some uh, defragmentated part of the um, canopy uh, construction. As you see at the left picture, uh, you see how difficult it was to put all these fragments together and uh, rivet, rivet them together uh, just to uh, reconstruct uh, them in the whole one piece. It was uh, really challenging thanks to the advice of the Harry Hopinen and thanks to our great uh, metal restorers, uh, we were managed to put them together. It was really challenging, especially there were thin aluminium elements covered with really bad corrosion. So. Uh, it was very fragile to put it together. We cannot apply any uh, strength to bend it or something like that because it may crack. So it was very slow process, very challenging process. But as you see, we were able to manage it. Side plexiglass panels was quite easy to, to apply because it's a quite simple shape. So we just put them together using existing molds uh, <coughs> 
it wasn't difficult to, to do this. Uh, next challenge with our uh, Finnish partners will be uh, to, uh, well, reconstruct some uh, front section canopy uh, plexiglass elements, but the question is how to do it and when to do it. It uh, will be a, a subject of the further debate, but right now we are really proud of, uh, well, rebuilding this section in the present condition. Another um, challenging thing, it was to build uh, machine gun replicas. As you know, Cadron was uh, armed uh, with four machine guns, uh, small caliber 7.5 uh, millimeter uh, machine guns, uh, put it in uh, under beneath the wing gondols or pods. It wasn't maybe very good solution because it was very tight uh, gondols. So uh, this, those machine guns wasn't very effective because of a small amount uh, of ammo, uh, but uh, uh, but uh, we were able to do this replicas, uh, and right now <coughs> we can show how uh, how the machine guns were uh, working uh, in the real life. So, uh, replicas was made by the Bogusław Godin, our metal um, restorer, and he done a really good job uh, building those uh, those replicas. Of course, inside the gondols, uh, there are no, uh, well, uh, exact replicas of the machine guns, but we had at least barrels to show general shape of the uh, of those weapons, and there's kind of, uh, well, mock-ups. All the things which uh, are uh, made as mock-ups could be easily uh, dismantled from the original aircraft and there are no ingression to the original uh, substance. Okay, I have to do something here to switch the slide because I have some technical problem. Okay, <clears throat> actually another challenge which we have to deal with is the tire restoration. As you see, uh, the aircraft uh, tires are in pretty bad condition. Um, there are original tires uh, from the Second World War era, so there are some lots of micro cracks and uh, the rubber is in pretty bad condition. So right now we will find out the solution how to uh, protect uh, rubber from cracking and uh, keep it in one piece. Uh, so that's a thing which it's not uh, yet, but soon will be done, I hope. <clears throat> and one of the, well, I think uh, quite interesting issues which we deal uh, with this aircraft. As you see, there was no front section at all. Uh, everything uh, which was uh, the engine compartment, except the uh, top cover, was uh, were missing. So uh, we've got only middle and um, tail section of the aircraft. But uh, well, the biggest value of presenting Cadron is to show the Cadron fuselage as one piece because of its shape. It's a very special shape we would like to present. Fortunately, we were able to um, gain some plants which were um, uh, displayed us by our Finnish colleagues and some of those uh, uh, was also uh, provided to us from the French um, partners. And we have a partner, uh, one of the Polish 3D printers manufacturers. So together with uh, experts uh, from the Finnish Air Force Museum, we decide to do 3D printed mock-up of the front section of the aircraft. As you see, uh, we have to make, uh, we have to rebuild all the engine compartment and the propeller and it was possible thanks to the Atmat company, which have large scale, uh, big 3D, re really big uh, 3D printers, uh, which allows us to uh, rebuild those elements. As you see, 
we uh, were able to rebuild the uh, uh, front section of the of the cadron. It's mock-up, of course. It's not not a part of aircraft, but it could uh, show uh, our visitors how the cadron was looking like um, in the future. All the section, all the mock-up section, it's uh, put it on the metal chassis, which uh, was uh, screw uh, to the original aircraft using existing uh, engine chassis mounts. So uh, it could be easily uh, disassembled. Uh, you need to unscrew um, three screws and uh, after five minutes, uh, this all section could be removed. So there was no uh, ingeration to the original aircraft uh, matter. So uh, if uh, you want to see only original substance, you're just removing this um, uh, front section mock-up and you have original aircraft in whole condition. As you see today, Cadron is looking like uh, that. This picture was taken um, two weeks ago. As you see, uh, some uh, elements uh, was attached, some are still missing. We cover uh, this uh, 3D printed uh, section with uh, paintwork, which is slightly different to the original, as we agreed uh, with um, our colleagues from the Finnish Air Force Museum. We put uh, some elements, uh, well, our colleagues from the uh, metal uh, restoration department built some missing elements, as you see on the tail section. And right now uh, you can see the aircraft is looking like, uh, well, machine uh, from the first uh, picture of my presentation. Actually right now uh, we will display Cadron on the new um, exhibition of the Second World War Warbirds on the rebuilded, in the rebuilded main hangar, which is our biggest project, which we are currently uh, running. Uh, in the Polish Aviation Museum. So I think there will be one of the most important exhibits which we displayed uh, for uh, our visitors. As you see, we are allowed and we are presenting uh, Finnish swastikas. There's a canopy which uh, is looking quite nice, I must say. And of course, uh, all the front section with the propeller um, blades are rebuilt or built uh, as a mock up uh, by our colleagues. So, uh, thank you very much. I hope uh, you enjoy this uh, restoration process as we do. And I hope uh, we will continue the work on the Cadron. Uh,